Milford will go to the Super Bowl or not. It's a very important game. From the Shrewsbury offense, and he says that when the Shrewsbury, what the Shrewsbury offense will show is a wishbone backfield. Tight, double tight, but actually we're more of a belly team. Uh, we either run Steve Cardozzi, our fullback up inside, or we run one of the two halfbacks, Duncan McRae or Keith Taparowski off tackle. Uh, if we go wide, we generally go wide with either one of those two kids. So that's just a little bit of a look at uh, what the Shrewsbury offense will show. Uh, and when they get out there, they're going to be pumped up. We saw them both out here uh, warming up before the game. Both teams, trying to, one trying to psych the other out. Uh, they, they, you know, clap the pads and, and scream a lot. And uh, it's something that you see at all high school games. You don't see it in the pros, uh, but you do see it in high school and you do see it in college. And that's the enthusiasm factor. And uh, but, but what we all know is that this game means a lot to both teams. Big game. It's the last game for your seniors. Uh, Fifteen years ago, when they came out with the rating system, I know whoever is ahead in the top two spots five minutes after the Thanksgiving Day game ends is uh, the people that the people that are going to go, and uh, that's really all you have to know as far as the Super Bowl standings go. And so uh, Holland. When I spoke to him, uh, expressed just a little bit of a worry. He's a little bit worried about stopping the Scarlet Hawk offense. Stopping the Milford kids, I don't know if we're going to be able to. Uh, most of the people they've played haven't been able to. So Dutch Holland, uh, he has a, uh, a cautiously optimistic view of coming into this game. Obviously, he's not too scared to show up. We saw him down on the field, and uh, you spoke to him, Jerry. Uh, did, did you talk to him a little bit uh, about the game? Well, I really didn't want to bother him. He was getting his team ready to go. He, he seems real calm. He's excited to be where he is. And uh, coming, you know, remove him from this game two years ago. They were 0-9 coming in. They knew that they really didn't have much of a chance against Milford, and they got you know, blown out of the game. Uh, just being in this game is a real credit to him and his team. On that line, uh, Shrewsbury, three years ago, their, their football program was, was pretty bad. Uh, Dutch Holland came in, and he's brought them along, and now he's to the point where he's eyeing a Super Bowl. That's right. His first year, they were 0-10, and I think, it, I think it was a conscious, sore, almost a three-year plan. He looked, and he saw that he had some real talented athletes in his sophomore class, Duncan McCray, Steve Cardozzi, Jeff Cormier, uh, just to name three of them. And he started playing these guys, and uh, they had to suffer through the first year, 0-10. Uh, but they came back last year, had a real good season. They beat Milford in, to, in the final game to go 7-2-1. And, and, uh, and here they are now. They're playing for the Super Bowl. They're playing for a possible, well, if they, would, if they win this game, they'll get at least a share of the league title. And so it, it, we, we just don't mean to drum this on, but uh, it, it is a very important game for both teams. And if you like, if you like high school football, and uh, a lot of times people enjoy seeing a game uh, on this level more than they do seeing it on the higher levels, uh, like the professionals, because down here you do see the kids make their mistakes, and, uh, and you also see them get excited. Uh, it's something that uh, in the NFL, I don't know, it's just lacking a little bit, uh, even with, uh, say, for instance, Roselle clamping down on the celebrations, uh, outlawing the fun bunch and the Gaston O'Sack dance, that type of thing. If you want to see those type of things, you can see it down here. You won't see the organized type of things because they don't allow spiking in, in high school. That's, that's a penalty. Mm -hmm. But uh, they do allow teams to get excited and run on the field and, and jump up and down, and, and uh, it's, it's what we've seen from Sky uh, the Scarlet Hawks, uh, they are a very uh, high-strung team. Well, not only do they have an exciting brand of football on the field, but like you say, they're real... Uh, I think you touched on it earlier. You mentioned the intimidation factor. And I remember when I used to play high school against Milford, uh, high school football against Milford, that was the, that was a team that really intimidated, intimidated us. Well, that was back in the days when Howie Long used to run around yeah, here, Howie too. Howie Long, right. I, uh, let's not talk about Howie Long. <laughs> Actually, Howie Long broke his leg against Franklin. Uh, and you still have nightmares about it. <laughs> I can tell. me, Howie, if you're listening out there. Yeah, I think they're, they're a pretty bulky team. Uh, you can see uh, number 72 down there, Chris McGinley, is probably the biggest guy out there. They have him listed at 6'5", 203. Uh, but there, there are a lot of other players who aren't quite as tall and are pretty bulked up. So uh, this should be a real physical game. We're expecting a physical game. And, uh, of course, in, in the past, when we've seen uh, the Scarlet Hawks take on teams that hit like, uh, like we're expecting Shrewsbury to hit today, We've seen them cough up the ball a couple times. That's been their real problem, and we, we talked to Breen about it, and uh, he just about goes cross-eyed when you mention those fumbles. But uh, 
Uh, it, it's something that he's had to try to work on, and it's because his players are trying to get that extra yard and they're taking that extra hit, and the ball pops loose most of the time under those circumstances. This is the most physical I've seen this league, or uh, probably the most physical football I've seen in a league. Uh, just incredible hitting out there. The Marlboro game, one through ten, all. All nine of the games Milford's played so far have been just incredible hitting games. Even even Franklin, which is 0-9, hit, hit Milford real hard. So you got to expect that kind of thing. As you say, if you're going for that extra yard, you got second effort, uh, take two or three hits, and maybe the ball's going to pop loose. It's not really mental errors. It's just uh, over-aggressiveness. What about the momentum factor here? It's an obvious... Uh uh, advantage to Milford in that they get their home crowd and and they're going to be making a lot of noise the homecoming home crowd uh, a lot of a lot of former Milford uh, students are, are back here and they're they're going to make a lot of noise this afternoon and that's going to work in Milford's favor but if Shrewsbury comes out and uh, starts playing solid uh, solid football and, and gets things untracked early and and starts to show this Milford homecoming crowd that they're here to play to play football and they mean business uh, that could equalize and neutralize this homecoming crowd kind of keep them out of the game yeah well uh, the homecoming crowd is a big factor uh, obviously Milford's gonna have more people here I, I think you have a, a point to an extent but I don't think it's it's the same situation as if you had a uh, professional situation where there's thousands and thousands of people rooting for one team and you quiet them down and then that gets your momentum going I'm, as soon as Milford does anything remotely right you're gonna see them uh, get just as vocal as they would be if Milford was winning. Well, the Scarlet Hawks are getting set to take the field as they gather down in the end zone to our right. The wind blowing in that direction now. I'm really sticking that flag straight out at this point. It uh, had been pretty docile for a while, but now the wind has really kind of picked up. And uh, the Scarlet Hawks, really an excited bunch as you look over there uh, uh, and, the, uh, and at the opposite end of the field as the Shrewsbury Colonials run through their offensive plays uh, and get set to take on this game. And uh, today, I think... They are going to have to be careful uh, that uh, some of their stars stretch out a little bit more today because that uh, the, with the with the footing as it is, a lot of times uh, a, uh, a player might try to make a cut and slip and pull a muscle, and uh, we've seen it happen many, many times, and it's something that uh, I'm sure both, both coaches and their trainers have tried to get their players to do today. It's also pretty, you know, November, late November, it's pretty chilly out there, so you do want to loosen up real well. Uh, big game, you're going to be real pumped up. It's going to you might tighten up a little bit, so you're right. Yeah, you do want to be uh, want to make sure that you're loose out there. Okay, we're just about going to wrap things up here. A couple more notes that I want to get in before we send it back to uh, the studios for a minute. Uh, last night in the NHL, the Bruins skated to a two-all tie against the Washington Capitals down in Landover, Maryland. Uh, the Celtics, meanwhile, rebounded from uh, their two-game losing streak. They came back up to Boston Garden, won their 47th straight game at the Garden. Uh, they beat the Knicks last night by 11. Uh, 101 to 90 and two notes from the Patriots camp Steve Nelson now is out for the year they say and that includes the playoffs so uh, Nelly with uh, knee ligament damage uh, had arthroscopic surgery yesterday uh, will be out until 1987 a big big loss for the uh, Patriots and uh, in another injury a note uh, Fr Irving Fryer the wide receiver was released from the hospital but will not play on Sunday in New Orleans still no word on whether he will be uh, uh, punished further by the team, uh, there was speculation that uh, they might uh, take take some further action off the field. Okay, so we're going to send it back for this brief message, but we'll be back with the game right after this. Discover TJ Spirits Route 135 in the Ashland Hopkinton line. TJ Spirits features great lunch and specials daily, plus on Wednesday and Saturday night between 5 and 9, it's the all-you-can-eat buffet for just $5.95. Wednesday, it's Italian. Don't panic right there. The scoreboard clock is official.
as the Milford High Marching Band will now play our national anthem. Even the Shrewsbury uh, uh, stands, uh, the away stands, are, uh, have quite a few people in them. Looks like Milford's receiving here. And we're underway here on an end-over-end -end kick, heading down to the right side of the end zone. Keevan, he takes it at the five, and he hustles up around the 30. He's got a little break, slips and falls, goes down on his left knee, and that's at the 30-yard 30, 30 line, and that's where Milford will put it into play. A nice return by Keevan. He, he might have had a little more if he didn't lose his footing and go down on his left knee, and that's when you're down in high school football is when your knee hits. I think you, uh, we've talked about how the seniors are going to be pumped up. Mike Keevan just made a real good play. He ran halfway across the field to uh, catch that punt, and like you say, he might have broken it if he hadn't slipped on the right sideline over there. Milford getting set to make their first offensive run at the Shrewsbury Colonials. Chris Wild, the quarterback, takes a snap and pitches left to Boldy. He's got a blocker in front of him. That's Lanzetta. Struggles forward for two yards. There's a flag on the other side of the field, and we'll have to wait to see what that's all about. Because the right end moved on the Milford side of the field. Milford right side. And it is indeed a legal procedure against Milford. That'll move him back a couple of yards. While we got this chance, let's set up the defense for Shrewsbury. At defensive end is Sean Dwyer, is uh, the sophomore uh, inside, inside left linebacker as Milford takes a snap on play number two. Pitch left again to Boldy. He's got a blocker, lands out, throws a nice one. Boldy's got some yardage. He picks up 10, so it'll be second down and five for Milford. A good run there, just a, 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 an option left, and a Wild pitched to uh, Boldy. No big surprise. Uh, uh, really, Wild had no place to go. Well, it's, it's a play that's worked for him all year. Saw Boldy sweeping. Uh, that might have gone a little farther if number 26 for uh, Shrewsbury. Mike Little hadn't come up and made the play. Doug Robertson was almost made the block. And the first pass by Wild as he drops back into the pocket and throws it out to the right, overshoots Alves, and that'll bring up a third down in five yards. Chris Alves was, was pretty wide open out there. Um, Chris, I'm sorry, Chris Alves was open on the right sideline. Chris Wild just overthrew him a little bit. If uh, Chris Alves had about another three or four inches on him, he might have been able to make that catch, but he couldn't, uh, couldn't reach that far out. Alves just a, a tad short on stature, but uh, big on heart. He plays 110% uh, as they say in sports, uh, one of the big cliches. And the pitch right this time goes to Boldy, and he breaks a couple of tackles, but won't have enough for the first down. It'll bring up a fourth down and two situation. It was uh, in one of the rare inside plays for Boldy to get them farther inside than he usually goes, but I think that was a matter of uh, Shrewsbury's containment on the left side of the line. They really uh, shut that down. The Scarlet Hawks will be forced to punt on their first possession. Boldy dropping back. Receiving four. Uh, the Colonials will be number 23, uh, and that is Duncan McRae. He's the all-around guy. Boldy gets the kickoff, and it's kind of a wobbler. Bounces at the 45-yard line and a roll dead at about the 42. Or make that the 38. Yes. Cardozi or, is the fullback, and the handoff will go to McRae. He's a big kid, and he just bowls ahead. Gets five or six yards. Just straight ahead, no tricks there, Jerry. This is a trick. Uh, they're, they're not they're going without a huddle here, Shrewsbury. And they are indeed lining up without a huddle. Cormier, the quarterback, and he hands off again up the middle to McRae, and he barrels over a couple of people and picks up two more yards. It'll be third down and about a yard for the first, and they're going without a huddle once more. Looks like they're just trying to ram the ball down the uh, throat of the Scarlet Hawk defense. And once again, McRae, and he gets the first down before he's brought down. Uh, he gets a couple more, and he'll be down across midfield at the Scarlet Hawk 47-yard line. And once again, Shrewsbury lines up without a huddle. This is something I've never seen, and it really seems to be working so far. I think Milford might want to call a timeout or something. Well, they haven't done anything tricky yet. They've just handed off to McRae three straight times, get a first down across midfield now. And a little counterplay going back the other way, and hit and drop for a loss is number 33, Toporowski. He's the sophomore that we've been talking about, uh, and uh, no tricks there, and just hauled down in the backfield, a two-yard loss. 
Well, uh, Dave DiGirolamo made that play. He didn't make the tackle. Mark Curran came up and made the uh, tackle, but DiGirolamo made the initial hit that slowed him up for Curran. And with that loss, we see Shrewsbury's first huddle on offense. Cormier, the quarterback. Cardozi, the fullback. Toporowski and McCray. And there is some movement by both the offense and defense. We'll have to wait to see who drew who off. It should go against the offense. I'm not saying what they will call, but even though the defense moved first, the offense was set and they moved before the ball was snapped. There was no contact made as far as I could see. No instant replays in high school football, so this will be settled uh, for good in just about a second. The referee is talking to the Milford defense, so it is going to go against Shrewsbury. Oh, no, it's not. As a matter of fact, they're calling them offsetting, Jerry. I never really understood that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an unusual call. They both jumped, but uh, one led to the other. So uh, uh, what we have here is uh, a case of uh, maybe a little bit of a dispute early in the game. From what I understand, unless the defense makes contact, uh, as long as the ball isn't snapped, it's, they're not offsides. And that's what happened, but the referee saw it the other way. Cormier takes a snap and hands off to McCray coming back the other way, or is that Toporowski? Uh, Keith Toporowski. I like that name. And he gets back two yards, the two that he lost on first down. It'll bring up third down and ten for the Shrewsbury Colonials, who had come out and bang, 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 run five plays off without a huddle before they finally, uh, and they were successful, and then they were thrown for a loss by the defense. Uh, uh, Mark Curran coming up to make a big hit, and now they're huddling on every down. Cormier at the line now. Takes the snap and pitches left to McCray. He's got a host of blockers in front of him, but the Scarlet Hawk defense does a good job of stringing that one out. They just had a lot of pursuit across the field and shut him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. From the beginning, you could see that wasn't going anywhere. Uh, there must have been five or six Hawks on that right side. I don't know if they were expecting the player. They just overplayed that side, but uh, there was just nowhere to go. So we played about four and a half minutes of this game, and uh, both teams just kind of feeling each other out now. Uh, taking left jabs if, the, if this were a boxing match. They're just kind of punching at each other as uh, Duncan McRae, the all-around guy, 60-minute player for Shrewsbury, uh, comes back to punt. Chris Alves back to receive the snaps a little low. A couple of guys got in and almost got a hold of this end-over-end -end kick that bounces at the 15 and will bound down inside the 10 and goes into the end zone, but it was touched before it went in. It is a touchback. Ball will go out to the 20, and uh, that was almost a, a fine play by number 40, uh, and uh, he almost trapped it inside the 10-yard line, but uh, accidentally knocked it into the end zone and uh, gives Milford a little bit of a break. It was Dave Zona. He, he tried to knock it back into the uh, playing field. He was close enough to the sideline where I think he should have just tried to knock it out of bounds, which would have put Milford in a real tough field position. It was a big break for Milford to get it at the 20 instead of inside the five. Just over six minutes to play here in the first quarter. No score on a beautiful Thanksgiving day down here. The uh, mascot down right below us, the Scarlet Hawk. And uh, we have a pretty good crowd on hand today, Jerry. People still filing in. Milford side's really uh, loaded up. Shrewsbury really looks like they could fit a few more people on that side, but uh, still fairly well represented. For, it's kind of a long ride. For, a, for an away game of that uh, uh, that distance, uh, there really is quite a, are quite a few people over there. Considering they can't hear us out there, I don't believe. <laughs> at, at any rate, uh, the, the referees, excuse me, Matt, the referees just talked over whether that was indeed a, a touchback, and they came to the conclusion that it was. So it's first and, and 10 up to 20. That's where Milford puts it in play. Wild the quarterback, Boldy the tailback behind Lanzetta, the handoff to Lanzetta going right, and he's got some room, and he's all down after an 11-yard gain. Robbie Lanzetta just burst through the line of scrimmage, and nobody touched him. It was an amazing pull on that right side of that Milford, Milford line. Nobody touched Lanzetta for 10 yards, and uh, there was one man to beat, and, uh, you know, Lanzetta, he wasn't going to try to make any fancy moves or anything. He just tried to go over it, and uh, the left cornerback made a nice open field tackle. Chris Elmore is wide left, Robertson wide right. Boldy still in at tailback behind Lanzetta, and Boldy will get the call, and he goes inside this time, which is, uh, as you said before, unusual for him. About a three-yard gain on the play. Milford wants to show as many uh, different aspects of the offense as they can. They, they want Shrewsbury to know that just because Boldy's getting the ball, it's, it's not going to be an, a sweep, and just because Lanzetta's getting it, it's not going to be a dive. So uh, try to keep guessing. The Milford Scarlet Hawks line up with Alves in the slot left and Robertson wide left. 
Boldy the tail back and the handoff up the middle to Lanzetta. Bounces and spins. Now there's a fancy move as he falls forward for eight yards. It'll bring up a third down and one situation. Even though it was fancy, it was typical Robbie Lanzetta. He banged off about four people and just kept spinning and spinning. And he uh, fought his way across the 40-yard line. And there's a timeout down on the field. A, a referee's timeout, an official's timeout as they measure for the first down for Milford. And uh, we expect to see Lanzetta get the ball, and he won't. It's a boldy pitch left, and he's got some running room. And he'll have the first down and more as he cuts back and uh, almost broke that for a huge gainer. He got seven yards on the carry as they get out to the 48-yard line of Milford. It'll be first and ten. See what made that play was uh, Chris Elmore split out wide to the left, and he started back in motion. And he cracked back on the, It was kind of a trap play. They let the uh, right tackle or right end in, and uh, when he came out to hit Todd Boldy, Elmore cracked, black, uh, cracked back, and there was a big opening for Boldy. And the handoff up the middle to Lanzette on this play. He's got nowhere to run as he's all down right at the line of scrimmage. He may have forced forward for a, a forged forward for about a yard, but uh, not much doing in the center of that Shrewsbury defense right now. The old mouth doesn't work so well this early in the morning, does it? <laughs> yeah, it is kind of tough waking up for this, but uh, it's it's an exciting game to this point. It's just what we had uh, kind of tried to build this thing up to be. Two teams really slugging it out with each other. Okay. Second down, 10 to go. Robertson left, and it is Alves split right. Boldy still the tailback. Elia is the fullback, and he gets the handoff and some running room, and he's got 10 yards. Make it 12, and the first down at the 39-yard line of Shrewsbury. A fine run by uh, Elia as he came in to spell Lanzette on that play. Those holes are just incredible in there. Uh, nobody touched him until he was in the defensive backfield, and he only needed one block, and he would have been gone. And uh, you could see him cradling that yeah. ball uh, like a loaf of bread, just, just kind of clutching it to his body. And uh, uh, it's, it's uh, I guess, uh, in an attempt not to get into that uh, that fumble situation that uh, he has found himself in a couple of times this year. Elia stays in. Boldy's a tailback still. And uh, it's going to be an option left. Pitch to Boldy as Wild is hit. And Boldy's got some running room. He cuts back and slips at the 28-yard line. But Boldy had some daylight. And he saw it. And he's upset with himself for losing his footing. But it'll be first down and 10 yards to go at the, uh, the Shrewsbury, excuse me, the Shrewsbury 27-yard line. So a fine pickup by Boldy. That was another one of those plays where Chris Elmore was on the left side and he cracked back and made a just great block to uh, spring Todd Boldy on the left side there. Chris Elmore's doing a real good job out here. First and ten, Wild hands off to, uh, that's Keaveny, and that's the first we've seen of him since the kickoff, and he gets about four yards now. And uh, that was a deceiving four-yard pickup as my voice cracks <laughs> for the first time since I was 16 years old. Uh, but uh, he picks up, well, three yards, I guess, and uh, struggled forward for those yards. Elia coming in, and what uh, the Scarlet Hawks have been doing more often in the last couple of weeks is run, uh, bringing the plays in from the sidelines with their receivers rather than with their tailbacks as they had earlier in the year. Wild pitches right to Keaveny. He gets a block in the backfield. Uh, that's... Uh, picks up just about another yard and that was Steve Mobilia throwing a nice kick out block right at the line of scrimmage that was, it, was a, it was a pulling guard kind of play Mobilia and he came out and made a nice block on the right backfield that would have prevented a, a loss from Milford the field they had 12 guys in the huddle but uh, luckily the referees didn't spot that Wild takes the snap and he's going to run option left. No, he's going to pass. He drops back, and he's hit and hauled down at the 34-yard line. That'll be a loss of seven yards. And that was a third down and six situation, so it'll bring up a fourth down. And uh, we've seen the Scarlet Hawks go for it in the, these situations in the past. Will they do it again? Well, it's hard to say. I don't think they're going to punt, but uh, maybe I'm wrong because it... they're bringing on the uh, punting unit, it appears. Wild comes off the field. Robertson. It's about a 51-yard field goal, so I guess uh, maybe they figure that you could see a fake here. Milford get a, a, an arsenal of fake punts. Boldy will do the punting. Takes the snap. Gets it off. It's blocked. And hauled down at the just about midfield. Boldy took his time getting that one off. And uh, number 56 on your lineup, who is uh, Jason Holly. One of the inside linebackers just squirted through, and actually he was one of three uh, Colonials that were in the backfield, and uh, that's a big break for Shrewsbury. 
Um, on both of those last two plays, when, when Wild went back to pass and on the punt, Shrewsbury had great penetration. They were right in there real quick. And uh, the guard, the sophomore guard you've been talking about, Jason Holly, was right on top of that punt. Cormier is a quarterback, and he'll hand off to the third man through in this wish back, uh, wishbone backfield. And that's uh, McCray. He just kind of falls forward for two or three. Just over a minute to play here in the first quarter. No score, lots of action. But uh, nobody getting across the goal line yet. Going without a huddle again, Cormier takes the snap and hands off to McCray again going right. And he gets a couple more yards. It'll be about a third down and three situation for Shrewsbury. And that was Taparoski. He wears 33, McCray 23. And uh, sometimes it's hard to tell McCray back in now. And uh, no huddle again. Cormier gives to McCray. He's hitting the backfield and hauled down. Number 68 in your lineup, or 66, is that Pandozi? That, that's 68, Kent Schiller uh, from Milford. Uh, I don't know where Joe Pandozi is. Uh, the last minute someone came up and said he was going to be starting, uh, Schiller was going to be starting at nose guard. Uh, haven't really heard anything about Pandozi. Joe Pandozi, not in there at, uh, at uh, nose tackle this afternoon. And that's Schiller, you say? That's what they tell me. No time left here in the first quarter as McCray dropped back to try to set up a punt. The time ran out, and uh, we'll have a break in action here, and uh, we'll be back after this message. Hi. Features to protect your home and its contents for its full value. They're turning the carpeting into oh, a teepee. Hey, I rent this place. Even renters need to protect their belongings, and we're doing that for you. I need to protect me. Norm, <laughs> they're only kids. Uh oh. What, Norm? Am I covered for loss of toupee? Why? I've just been scalped. Oh, Boy, I hate oh, rainy but... days. You know what I mean? Don't get scalped when you buy insurance. Talk to the Kemper Cavalry at the Carl Bright Insurance Agency. When you need protection, they've got you covered at the Bright Agency, 6 Congress Street in Milford. Okay, while we were away, uh, fourth down was played here at uh, Milford High School. Shrewsbury tried to punt, couldn't get their punt off, so they turned it over. On downs to the Scarlet Hawks, right at midfield, and on first and ten, Steve Mobilia stands up a little bit early, and uh, that'll move the Scarlet Hawk offense back five yards. First down, 15. 10.56 to go here in the first half. No score. Matt Osmanski along with Jerry Guerra of the Middlesex News. And uh, we saw a lot of action in that first quarter, Jerry. Well, Milford looked like they had the momentum when they moved right down the field. And on that block punt, Shrewsbury might have gotten it back, but didn't take advantage of it, uh, having to turn it over on down to four plays. So we got Robertson wide right, Alves in the slot right, and uh, Wild will drop back and look over his receivers, going for Alves, and Alves was momentarily open. He's got it! Alves is going to score! A beautiful pass! and catch from Chris Wild, and he hit Alves right in stride at about the 30-yard line, goes into the end zone untouched, and Milford goes up six to nothing. It was a perfect flat, perfectly run pass play. Uh, Chris Wild had plenty of time. He had Alves streaking down the right sideline. It was some coverage back there, but Chris Alves outran it, and uh, he was all alone by the time he caught the ball. He made a nice uh, basket sort of catch, and was just ran in the last 20 yards without anybody on his tail. That's just like you draw it up on the uh, the highlight films. Chris Alves hauling it in over his shoulder and scampering in 30 yards. He just turned on the juice and ran away from Little, the uh, defensive back on that cover. Really fooled him on that play. I don't think Little even realized he was out there. It was a 56-yard pass play. Wild will attempt the extra point here, 6 to nothing, early in the second quarter. The kick is up, and it is going to be... Good. Wasn't so it's 7 to nothing here at uh, Milford High School. And uh, with the score, 7 to nothing, just over 10 minutes to go in the first half. We're going to take a break for this message. Feel the difference the right tire can make with a new set of Kelly Navigator 600s from Milford Tire Products. The Kelly Navigator 600, an all-season steel-belted radio. Pass. It's uh, worked all year. Chris Alves to Chris, uh, Chris Wild to Chris Alves, and uh, that's the big advantage Milford has. All right, Cormier in at quarterback for Shrewsbury takes the snap and the uh, hands off going right to the fullback. That's Cardozi bowls ahead for five yards before he's hauled down. Second down and five. Well, he is a solid kid out there at uh, Cardozi, huh? 
Looks a lot like, as you said in the show last night, it looks a lot like Robbie Lanzano. Well, that's who Dutch Holland, coach of Shrewsbury, compares him to. Uh, they play the same uh, two uh, pin, uh, Cardozi, rather, going right again. Gets close to the first down. Brought down, I believe, by Fessler on that play. Cardozi showed some real quickness to get getting outside there, but he's not... Uh, He's not your Todd Boldy or your Duncan McCray type. He's more, as you said, lands out. The, the deception in that backfield is that there are three guys and uh, the quarterback can hand to any of the three. And a lot of times it's hard to tell. They use a lot of uh, counter and a lot of uh, hidden ball plays. And it's hard to tell who gets the ball uh, for us. And as you can imagine, down on the field, it's uh, just as hard. Well, as a, you know, as Dutch Holland has told you and, and, well, actually told both of us, it's not really a wishbone, but... In a sense, it is, because it's, it, it's an option sort of deal where the quarterback, at least it looks like an option to me. Maybe the plays are set, but it, it looks like the quarterback has it, the option in there. Cormier sets first and 10 for uh, Shrewsbury out at the 30-yard line, and the handoff goes up the middle again, and that is Cardozi. They seem to want to get one guy and give, it to the, give the ball to him two or three plays in a row, and uh, it, it has been successful. He gets five yards there, second down five. It's an interesting offense, the way that... You know, the, they haven't been real flashy with their tricks, but I mean, coming out without without using a huddle, it was just something that really caught Milford off guard at first until they finally uh, shut it down. They are using the huddle. They, they have gone back to that no huddle offense sporadically in the game. Cormier in at quarterback, takes the snap, and he hands off going right again, and I believe that's Cardozi under the pile. He gets two yards before he's hauled down. And it is indeed Cardozi. So they 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 had they stuck with McCray early. Now they're going to Cardozi on this series. Third down and three to go, or two. The scoreboard says nine minutes to play in the half. Seven to nothing. Milford on top. Couldn't tell who that was. Was that uh, Cardozi? Or was that McCray? Well, either they're, they are two big horses, and I thought it was McCray came off the bottom of that pile. It's real hard to tell, like you said. Jump, there's the defense jumped for the Scarlet Hawks, and uh, no flags down. I don't. Oh, there is a flag across the way, and it looks like it's going to go against Milford, and it's a shame because they had them stopped on the down. Uh, we don't like to, uh, I don't like to guess unless I'm sure, so I'm not going to uh, guess, but you're right. That'll and that'll, that will give Shrewsbury a first down, so uh, that, that's a, one of those devastating uh, uh, penalties that you get. A lot of times on those third downs, uh, uh, I know when uh, uh, a lot of teams will use what they call a no play, where they just call their, their cadence and don't move, and then they have an extra uh, signal, and then they go on that signal rather than the, uh, the normal signal, and that's in, in uh, uh, the effort to draw the defense off sides. The handoff going on the counter, back the other way, that's the top of Roski, and he's hauled down for a four-yard loss by the Scarlet Hawk defense, so a big play, uh, two consecutive big plays, one of them nullified by an offside, uh, but it'll bring up second down and 14 to go for Shrewsbury. Now comes out as a slot man, uh, second man in on the left, and they go to a split backfield, handoff going right to Cardozi, and nothing doing there. I believe that is Mobilia runs him out of bounds. Penalty late in that uh, on that series. Well, there was uh, a little bit of a shoving match out near midfield between Mike Keaveny and uh, Little, the uh, the wide receiver for uh, Shrewsbury. We'll have to wait and see what the referee says happened there. No signal as of yet. They really haven't indicated who it's going to go against. Could go either way depending upon what the referee saw. I just saw the tail end of that, so. Uh, a lot of times that's all the referee sees too, so. But it looks like they're ready to walk it off against Shrewsbury. And it does indeed, and it's going to be a personal foul clip against the Shrewsbury, uh, and I believe it's Little. He was the only one there. They kind of threw the flag right at him, but uh, that'll march him back uh, 15 yards, 10 yards it is, and uh, no, it is 15 yards. At the 27-yard line, it will be third down, second down, and a whole bunch. 29 yards. So uh, Shrewsbury's got its work cut out for him here if they want to continue this drive. It had been churning, and uh, now this is throwing a little wrench into the system. Single back now is Cardozi, and uh, he gets the call right up the middle. He's got a little bit of room as he busts through the line of scrimmage, and he's hauled down. Uh, he gets six yards, but uh, not nearly enough to, to uh, for the first down. Still have to go another 20, 22 yards to uh, pick up the first. He ran right over uh, Chris Elmore, but Elmore stayed, stuck with it and made the tackle. 
took the big hit, but hauled him down anyway, at any rate, and uh, that'll bring up a third down and 21 situation, and there's a timeout on the field, and with that timeout, we're going to take a break here. We'll be right back after this. Taylor Rental. And uh, half a wishbone pitch left, and that is to McCray, and a beautiful play on defense. Drops. Uh, DiGirolamo drops McCray, swinging left, lost another six yards. That'll bring up a fourth down and a whole bunch, 25 yards. And a uh, fine play on that uh, set by Dave DiGirolamo. Just penetrated, uh, fought off two blockers, really, and hauled down McCray, who's no uh, no small back in his own right. Dave DiGirolamo has been incredible all year. That that time he just dove over his blocker, tripped up McCray, and uh, made a big, big play. It's just incredible. He's, he's been amazing this year. McCray will do the kicking for uh, Shrewsbury as a guy comes in late, and that should be a penalty. Uh, the kick is off. Ball bounds at the 45-yard line and a roll dead right there. Uh, but uh, Shrewsbury had a man coming in late in that, and uh, the, the, he, he was an illegal man in motion at that point, and uh, uh, the flag went down. It actually was because he was moving backwards. He wasn't going forward, and it was just they were lucky in the fact that he wasn't. Uh, that's what the referees decided, I, under, I guess. Uh, he, he did come in late, but I, he must have been legally in motion. No one else was in motion, so... So Milford puts the ball in play at the 45-yard line. First and 10. Wild the quarterback and uh, Boldy the tailback. He gets the call right up the middle, and that's about the third or fourth time we've seen him with the ball up the middle. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for a foot or two, uh, but really no gain, nothing going there. Alves trots off the field, and uh, as I tried to point out earlier, the, uh, the Milford offense has now gone away from rotating Keeveny and Boldy in and uh, bringing the plays in. And now they're using Elmore and Alves to, to bring the plays in from the sidelines. I think it's because uh, Chris Elmore has proven himself just a great blocker out there. He's a real big play man for Milford. Elmore is in the slot left. Robertson wide left. The handoff going right to Boldy, and he breaks it. He's got a blocker in front of him. One man to beat, and that man hauls him down at the 30-yard line after a gain of uh, 25 yards for Boldy. A big pickup for him, and it'll be first and 10 deep. Well, at the 30-yard line, that's pretty deep anyway uh, for Milford with uh, five and a half minutes to go here in the first half, and uh, Milford leading seven to nothing. What may have been the most impressive part about that run, he, you know, he got some good blocks, he got out in the open, but uh, Eric Nelson, who came up, made that tackle for Shrewsbury, tackled the ball, and Todd Boldy really made a great effort to hold on to it. Set to go on offense. Lanzetta, the fullback, Boldy, the tailback, Wild, the quarterback, takes the snap, ends off to Lanzetta off the left tackle, and he kind of using that spin move again, Jerry, but he gets four or five, falls forward for one anyway, and uh, it'll bring up a second down and seven situation. Six, six yards, that is, and uh, just over five minutes to go, the clock running. All these guys, you, know, you mentioned the spin moves, I guess he, they... they march out the fancy stuff for Thanksgiving, but uh, it's, it's been effective, so you can't really fault them. Wild still in a quarterback, lands out of the fullback, and Wild is going to run the option pitch left to Boldy. He's got a little bit of running room around in. He's going to fall forward for the first down, I think. Boldy uh, get, got his blockers out in front of him, and he really uses his blockers well, Jerry. Yeah, he did on that on that 23-yard run earlier, and on that play also, just to, just to gain the six or seven yards that he did get, it... Uh, took some real smart running behind those blockers. But the amazing thing is that uh, that option works where Chris Wilde very, very rarely keeps it and uh, it still works, and that's partly because of the talent of Todd Boldy. It, that, uh, it works in that uh, Boldy is able to get outside and also with Wilde at least faking that uh, he's going to keep the ball. He draws the defensive end in, so it's one less guy that they have to block. Elia in now as the lone setback for Milford. Three guys wide right, Boldy, Alves, and Robertson. And the handoff up the middle to Elia, swarmed under after a short gain. Picks up a yard. It'll be third down and eight for Milford. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Ball at the 19-yard line of Shrewsbury. And the Milford Scarlet Hawks on the march. Chris Elmore bringing the play in from the sidelines now. The wind, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry I was going to say, after that play, only a one-yard game, it's not a good time to bring this up, but it looks like Milford's controlling the line of scrimmage in this game. Okay, Elias stays in, and the handoff goes to Boldy left, cuts back, and uh, nothing really doing there either. He gets another yard, so it'll bring up a fourth down. 
Can I re just retract that statement? I just <laughs> or a, is that a third down? It's going to be third and eight. It's going to be third and eight. Okay. At least. I, they, they really marked, didn't give him much of a mark. It's going to be uh, no game for third and nine, it looks like. So Lanzetta comes back in, and Elia will trot to the sidelines. Elmore in, Alves on the sidelines. Seriously, Milford's line is controlling most of this game. Uh, the blocking has really been there on the offensive line of scrimmage for the, these backs, Boldy and Lanzetta. Well, there are big guys on both sides of the line. Wild sets, drops straight back, rolls a little right now, fake pumps, throws over the middle, ball is tipped. And incomplete, Jason Holly got his hand on the ball. It was intended for Roberts at the uh, first down marker, but it falls incomplete. It'll bring up a fourth down and eight situation. And uh, we've seen Milford run these uh, on fourth down, just go for the play rather than try the field goal, or and this is uh, obviously too deep to punt. And Milford takes a timeout, and they're going to talk it over. And while they talk it over, you're going to hear this message. try to up the score a little bit. It looks like Dennis Green came out, talked to Chris Wild, asked him what he, if he thought he could make this 30, 38 yards. He's got the wind with him, so uh, Chris Wild said he thought he could. The wind blowing directly to Wild's back. The kick is up, and it's not going to be nearly uh, long enough as it falls short right at the goal line. So Wild gave it his best, but uh, Milford will turn it over to Shrewsbury on downs, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. First and 10 for Shrewsbury. So it was as good as a punt that rolled in the end zone. Yeah, well, basically... Uh, Chris Wild looked like he kind of overhit that ball. He was really trying to make the distance and uh, just really didn't get anything on it at all. But Milford didn't lose too much. If they went for it, went for the play and didn't make it, they'd, um, Shrewsbury would still have the ball in the same situation. And like you said, if they punted and went in the end zone, which is almost a sure thing from the 19-yard line, uh, Shrewsbury would get the ball at the 20 anyway. So it was worth a try. Jeff Cormier brings the Shrewsbury offense back out in that wishbone look. And the handoff is to... Taparowski going right. Doesn't pick up too much. A yard, maybe. And he's the sophomore sensation that we're going to be seeing a lot of in the next couple of years uh, in that uh, he was brought in during at, at about midseason and has 500 yards already. Well, he's a sophomore sensation. We've seen another sophomore, Jason Holly. So, obviously, there's a uh, future here for Shrewsbury and at least those two players. Second down, eight yards to go. Wishbone looks still for the uh, Shrewsbury Colonials. And the hand out, and it's a pass play complete to McCray. He hit that ball so well, I didn't even see him dropping back. And it was a little bit of a wounded duck, but McCray hauled it in for the first down for Shrewsbury out to the 30 yard line. It was just incredible. He got that pass off. He had Mike Keaveny blitzing from the right side, a uh, cornerback blitz. He hit him just as he released the ball, and it kind of floated up there, but uh, he had enough on it to get it to Duncan McCray, and McCray hauled it in. It'll bring up first and 10 at the 30-yard line for Shrewsbury, trying to mount something here late in the first half. And the handoff goes to the right. First man through, and that is, uh, that's going to be Duncan McRae, I believe, at the bottom of that pile. I suppose we could get them to change their jersey numbers so we could, uh, we got 25, 23, and 33, so it's... And tough. sure enough, I was wrong. It was Cardozi with the ball. He picks up five yards, second down and five for Shrewsbury. Two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Seven to nothing. Milford leads on this homecoming uh, morning. I keep wanting to say afternoon, but it is still morning. The handoff goes to Cardozi again. And this time, Milford has it red. If he got anything, it wasn't much. A yard, perhaps. Bring up a third down and six situation. Little fisticuffs going on down there. They're swinging at each other in that, the bottom of that pile. Uh, Lanzetta and DiGirolamo in there for Milford. I didn't, uh, didn't catch who was in there for Shrewsbury other than number 20, who is Bob Co uh, Cody. Those are, uh, the, the emotions are high in this game. There's a lot at stake for both teams. The seniors want to win this game, obviously. Go out winners, possibly play in one more game, which would be the Super Bowl. So with that in mind, and this being a tough, hard-nosed team on both sides of the ball, uh, you expect that type of thing. This time dropping back for the second pass is Cormier. He's scrambling, fake pumps, and he's going to have the first down and a couple more 
for Shrewsbury out to the 45-yard uh, line, excuse me, and uh, Cormier doing what uh, Dutch Holland says that he does best, and that is uh, run with the ball. He's a real threat to run. He, we saw that he can pass the ball, but it's not his, his strength as opposed to his running game, and if given the choice, I think he, Dutch Holland would rather see his, his uh, little quarterback run the ball. And there is another timeout on the field with a minute and a half to go. And while they look things over down here, you listen to the ball, the handoff to Cardozi up the middle on first down, gets maybe a yard and a half, a uh, tough yard and a half. He gets those tough yards like Lanzetta gets the tough yards for Milford. I'll tell you something, uh, Shrewsbury can't really keep going at this pace if they hope to score. There's only about a minute under, closing in on a minute left in this game, and half, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, wishful thinking, I guess, with a 7 nothing lead. But That's um, right. The wind picking up quite a bit now, and uh, Shrewsbury will have the wind at their back when they come back out for the second half. Cormier takes the snap, hands off to Cardozi, gunning, coming left this time, strung out by Keaveny, and he was really the key on that play. Taparowski trying to throw the block on his uh, on the defender, Keaveny, but Keaveny fighting the block off, forcing it back inside, where Steve Mobilia, or Mark Kern, rather, was able to haul him down. I think Taparowski actually made that tackle. It looked like... Cardozi tripped over his halfback's ankle as he was running by him. Might have made, had a few more yards out of that one. Third down and six to go for Shrewsbury. They're out to the 45-yard line, 44-yard line, make it. Cormier, the quarterback, single setback is Duncan McRae. He's going right with this one. He's got a lot of blockers and the first down, and then three more, and he throws a spin, uh, spin move on uh, the, uh, Fessler, I believe, or Mbili on the bottom of that tackle. And uh, he looked like Lanzetta with that, that uh, spinning pirouette move. I guess maybe he realizes he's a lot like Lanzetta and maybe trying to mimic his uh, double there. But it's only 15 seconds left. And if Shrewsbury, you know, this, the fact that they're moving the ball is great, but the half's going to run out on them unless they, unless they throw the ball. 15 seconds left, and there's a timeout on the field, so we're going to take another timeout here. The, the Shrewsbury people didn't wait for us. They went and ran first down without us. Uh, it was a hook and trail try, but there was just no room on that side of the field to run that play, Gary. Yeah, strange to run that to the short side. You want to you have as much room as possible on that kind of play. Uh, real surprised they went to the right side with the ball in the hash mark. And it was uh, kind of a screen setup too. We'll get this play and go back to that one. Wishbone set, drop straight back by Cormier, and he's going to screen it to the left of Cardozi. He's got a couple blockers in front of him. And he'll have a first down. So the screen works in this situation, but we only have a second left in the half now. So that one took too much time. Uh, I guess they were trying to get into the end zone with that play. Well, I don't think they're going to do it. I think maybe they're trying to set that one up with, with the previous play uh, going to, on this time, this time they went to the far side. They had a little bit of room to run, but uh, Robbie Lanzetta came in and made a nice play. And if he wasn't, if he didn't make the tackle, there were some other people out there for Milford. Now on that hook and ladder play, uh, they had McRae set up right on the line of scrimmage. He caught the ball and flipped it back to Cardozi, but uh, really, Cardozi tried to go behind McRae, and uh, nothing doing, uh, didn't fool anybody, and uh, really, had he gotten by the line of scrimmage, there were just too many Scarlet Hawks right there to, to, to haul him down, so uh, that play was uh, uh, designed poorly for the, for the field position they were in. Isn't it? Ill-conceived. How does that sound? Very good, Jerry. Very nice. One second left in the half. Milford holds a 7 nothing lead right now. Uh, one more play in the half, unless it ends on a penalty on the defense, and we'll have to run another play. But uh, let's see this one unfold first. Single setback will be Cardozi. Cormier, the quarterback, and he's going to drop straight back, and he's looking over on the right side. Fessler's eyeing an interception, but he just bats it down. Playing a little volleyball with that one, and the half comes to an end. And it's been an exciting one, and we're going to look for uh, uh, the same in the second half. Dutch Holland going to go get his team uh, prepared for that second half as uh, homecoming is set to get underway here at, uh, at the halftime. The score here is 7 to nothing. Uh, I'm Matt Osmanski along with Jerry Guerra from the Middlesex News, and we're going to take a little break, but we'll be back after these halftime activities. I'd say they've bent a little bit on, on those drives, but they really haven't given up anything like those long runs they've given up the last uh, three or four weeks. They really have to avoid that in the second half here because Shrewsbury can get back in this game real quick. Shrewsbury is receiving, so uh, they're going to really have to guard against some, something like one of those 70, 80-yard runs that they've been giving up. And that's something graphic with Dennis Breen's uh, <laughs> emotions here. Yeah, uh, 
that, well, that he, really he's a high strung coach and that's what I mean uh, and when you talk about the things that bug him most uh, uh, he gets very animated about it of course it. any football coach would it's the kind of thing that, that's got to really upset a coach but obviously they've been working on that they've been real careful not to give up the big run and they haven't uh, given up I think the longest gain has been 10 yards and that was uh, that was towards the end of the half when Shrewsbury had that that drive where they gained most of the yardage but it was it was a useless drive because there was no time left they wasted the score yeah they did waste a lot of time getting that on we're winding halftime activities down just about to get underway for the second half milford will be kicking off to shrewsbury but while we have this opportunity we're going to take a little break we'll be back after this message did you hear what happened to Thursday, November 27th, the Middlesex News will introduce its new op-ed page. Op-ed stands for opinion and editorial. And on this page... Scrimmage has really controlled play, especially offensively. They've opened some real big holes for their backs. If they can continue to do that, there's no way that they won't score again. That's, uh, and it's something that we've seen Milford be able to do uh, in most of their games this year is control the line of scrimmage. They have a lot of beef on the front line, and uh, they, they are able to use it, and because they use that, they execute their runs well. Their runs are their bread and butter. I know I'm starting to sound like I'm, I'm, I own a restaurant here with the beef up front, the bread and butter, and the running, but uh, uh, that's, that just about says it uh, cliche-wise for uh, uh, the offense. I think it's okay to talk about food on turkey day, so keep keep up with those uh, analogies we got a whole second half to go as wild puts the ball up and into play and it'll bound down at the 25 yard line Toporowski will handle it and cuts back across the field and is hammered and that is uh, D. Girolamo falls down Toporowski and that's a uh, an ominous way for Shrewsbury to start the second half. They almost lost one of the tailbacks on that play. He really got hammered by Di Girolamo. But the, Milford's pulling on all the stops. They have Di Girolamo on the kickoff team and, uh, you know, no holds barred kind of game, speaking of cliches. But uh, <laughs> we'll use them all today, folks, believe me. But with this game so important and the last game of the season, potentially, unless they win, uh, everybody's going to be out there. Okay, first down. Cormier, the quarterback, still. Cardozi gets the first call and gets two or three yards all down at the bottom of that pile is Schiller the nose tackle and Lanzetta climbing off the pile as well good day for football here the wind has picked up here uh, at, at, uh, at game time it really wasn't blowing that well but uh, it's got the flag standing straight out right now and, uh, and it's at the back of Milford at this point but in the fourth quarter when they switch ends Shrewsbury will have the ball at their, uh, at the, uh, the wind at their back, excuse me, and uh, that could benefit them. Cormier calling the signals, pitch is right, and that's Toporowski with the ball, sweep right, and he's hitting the backfield, and they lose two yards. So the Milford defense figured out the Shrewsbury offense, Jerry? Well, so far it seems like it, uh, except for that sustained drive where Milford was hanging back, trying to make sure they didn't give, didn't give up the big play. Shrewsbury really hasn't moved the ball. Uh, they've been stringing out the sweeps. Uh, string it out, and you have somebody like Chris Elmore come up and make that big hit like he did. It'll be third down, and uh, the clock says 89 yards, but that can't be right. Uh, dropping back to pass. It's a draw play, and that is Cardozi. Loses his footing, swiggles forward, swiggles. Uh, good word, but uh, picks up almost enough for a first down. I think they're going to have to measure Cardozi with a fine piece of running there and uh, picking up what is potentially a first down. 
That was that, that spin move you mentioned, and uh, that really, that, if it wasn't for that spin move, he wasn't going to make that first down. And he did get it. Uh, it'll be first and 10 at the 29-yard line of Shrewsbury for the Colonials. And uh, the footing still, uh, it was an issue before the game, but the, the players have come out here, and the only person I've seen lose his footing today was the trumpeteer on the band. He fell down while he was out there, but uh, at any rate, on first and 10, the handoff goes right to Cardozi. He picks up two or three yards, is uh, hauled down by De Girolamo and Schiller and Curran. I think we're getting the hang of these names now. We're finally figuring out who's who just by uh, the way they, they carry the ball and uh, their size. It, it is a, really a little good job on that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, I get an A on that play, and we have uh, approximately 30 more to go. Uh, Cormier, the quarterback again, and a real wide uh, set, almost a wing key offense. Uh, confusion in the backfield, and the handoff goes to Cardozi, who wiggles forward for another yard. Swiggles and wiggles, this guy, doesn't he? Yeah, he really gets around. It'll bring up a third and five situation for Shrewsbury at their own 35-yard uh, line. Eight and eight minutes and 22 seconds left here in the third quarter of play. Seven to nothing. Milford holds the lead. And Cormier will bark out the signals here. Half of the wishbone offense behind him. Pitch right to Duncan McRae. And he picks up three of those yards. Not enough for a first down. It'll be fourth down and a yard and a half. And decision time for uh, Dutch Holland. Is it too early to go for a fourth down situation here? Is this a four down series right now? Well, it looks like they're going to measure, but I don't think they have it. Uh, if it's short, I think you're going to have to kick it away. You don't want to give Milford good field position with that seven point lead. It didn't appear to me to be that close. Maybe you got a good spot. I, like I say, I don't think they had it. I'd, I'd be real surprised if they went for it here. Uh, and don't it, make it and it could be disastrous it was closer than i thought it was it's only inches now with this spot but uh, it is indeed fourth down Did so he, he kind of slid in that on that wet-ish field not exactly a wet field but he got it you know he got a bit of a slide and the referee surprisingly marked it where he landed where he ended up rather than where he landed that so make that, any sense? And they are going to go for it on fourth down, Jerry. Uh, they bring in the full wishbone offense, and it's a quarterback sneak, and he appears to have the, the first down, car, uh, Cormier, on the carry. That's his second carry of the game. And he does indeed have enough for the first. It's another interesting set. Uh, figure, I don't know if maybe the backs just figured that they weren't going to do anything anyway in a quarterback sneak, and they just stayed in their, their three-point stance. But possibly they were thinking the defense might be keying them. They didn't move. The ball was snapped. And if, if, if you're keying it back and he doesn't move, you're not going to react. So uh, Cormier just snuck that two yards. Curran sneaking up looking like he's going to blitz on this play. And he does come. And it's a pass play out into the right flat. And it was almost as if Shrewsbury, it's incomplete, by the way. Uh, that is an important issue, uh, incomplete pass in it. But it almost looked as if Shrewsbury read that and threw to uh, Curran's side. They threw where he vacated when he blitzed. It's possible. At this point of the year, a lot of teams have audibles. Uh, he might have audibled out there. Mike Keevan, he stayed home. Uh, he covered Toporowski real well. And uh, there was no chance, even if he had completed that, of that being the big game-breaking play. Seven minutes, 16 seconds to go with the clock stopped here in the third quarter. Seven to nothing, Milford leads. Cormier, the quarterback, hands off going right to Cardozi, and he's met at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for a yard. It'll bring up a third down and nine situation for Shrewsbury. And uh, Dutch Holland may have to go to the pass again today. He said he doesn't, he, that, that that is not their forte. What they, what they do best is run the ball, and we've seen them do that predominantly today. But uh, when the chips are down, he has thrown the ball a couple of times. Like a lot of teams that like to establish the run first and then set up the pass if they need it. Uh, they haven't really established the run. They might have to go to the pass. Wishbone, backfield, Cardozi the fullback. And here we are going to see a pass, and it's a screenplay incomplete. And the Scarlet Hawks had that one read all the way. Steve Mobilia slid out. The, the pass was intended for Duncan McRae. Mobilia was there just in case McRae did catch the ball. And uh, they are comparable in size, so uh, it, it probably would have been thrown for a loss. Brings up a fourth down situation, and Shrewsbury will be forced upon, I believe, in this situation. Fourth and nine on their own 41-yard line. And indeed, Duncan McRae does drop back the kick. Keeveny and Alves back deep to receive. They're standing at 
uh, while Alves is at the 25, Keaveny at the 30. And the kick is a pretty good one, uh, kind of a knuckleball, but it bounces to the 30 and gets a Shrewsbury roll down to the 25-yard line and inside the 25 to the 24 and a half, and it'll be first down, 10 to go for Milford when they take over on downs here. Well, key, to that, key to that defensive series was uh, the left side of Milford's uh, deep back secondary sort of situation. Uh, Chris Elmore was coming up and stuffing those sweep rights by Shrewsbury, and then uh, Robbie Lanzetta was finishing off. Those two had a really good defensive series. And Lanzetta stays in at fullback. Boldy, the tailback. Alves in the slot right, and Robertson wide right. The handoff up the middle to uh, Boldy. And he's going in between the hole. He picks up a yard or two. He's going in the hole between guard and tackle. And uh, it's something that we haven't really seen him do a lot this year. What Breen likes to do with him is send him wide and uh, today we've seen him inside two or three times, maybe uh, even more uh, for that matter. Chris, uh, Todd Bowley's more of an open field runner. I'm surprised he would want to use him inside. He's not your classic inside man, but I guess he just wants, like I said, to keep Shrewsbury thinking. Second down nine, Elia in at fullback. Elmore in motion left to right. The handoff to the second man through Boldy, and that's through the middle again. He gets four more yards. It'll be third down and five for Milford. And again, as, as we talk about it, uh, they hand off to Boldy going up the middle. He's a big kid, but what he does best is break tackles in the open field. Well, he runs kind of standing up, straight up, which isn't, isn't good for an inside man. He, he can get that yardage inside, but he's much more effective outside, and Robbie Lanzetta is much more effective inside. But as I said, if you're sitting back, this where you've watched Milford for nine games, you see Todd Boldy get the ball, you're immediately thinking sweep, you know, maybe trying to keep him off balance a little bit. You watching those cheerleaders, Jerry? That's quite a dance they're doing. Third down and five, Wild hands off to Lanzetta up the middle, and he's not going to get the first down. Picks up two, but it'll bring down, uh, bring up fourth down and three. I didn't. And I wasn't watching the cheerleaders. Somebody has to watch the game, so uh, <laughs> I just uh, I was enjoying that dance they were doing. A kind of a combination, uh, a 60s swim dance and uh, and uh, Pee Wee Herman big shoe dance. But uh, it was really something to watch, folks. Uh, if you didn't make it down here, then uh, I just you just have to take my word for it. Boldy back to punt now on fourth down. Deep to receive is McRae. Boldy had his punt blocked last time. This is his third attempt, and he hits a pretty good one. Goes out of bounds at the 36 or 7-yard line, and that's where Shrewsbury will put it into play. Right after we come back from this message, we'll bring you that. Bounds, which I've never seen before, but uh, by that time, the play had been whistled dead. Okay, Cormier, the quarterback, the wishbone offense behind him, and there's some movement on the right side of the offensive line of scrimmage. And I don't see any flags at this point, but it seemed to me somebody jumped too early. I think what happened was the center snapped the ball too early, which isn't really a penalty because nobody moved before the snap. Uh, right. Cormier was heady, heady enough to take the ball and run it forward for about four or five yards. So that one fooled me and just about everybody else. It's uh, second down and five to go. He picked up five yards on that play. Kind of a busted play, but Cormier made the best out of it. And he brings up the wishbone offense once more. Takes the snap, and this time it goes to Cardozi up the middle. And he's battling. And I was wrong on that one again. It's a good thing I wasn't playing defense as they went with Toporowski swinging right. They gave the fake to Cardozi up the middle. And uh, he has really no room there. No gain on the play. Third down and five. That's a point we've made that, that the, it, maybe it isn't an option to wishbone, but it sure looks like one because you have that fake and then you have the, uh, you know, the surprise man goes outside and the fake to the inside. The fake, the straight dive up the middle to the fullback and give the other, the tailback, the run to the sweep to the right. And uh, we're going to go with uh, Duncan McRae up the middle this time. He gets three, but that's not enough for a first down. It'll be fourth down and two for Shrewsbury. Is that uh, McRae or Toporowski? I... Normally, McRae lines up on the right side in that defense. Okay, I'll take your word for it. And it is indeed McRae. Got to keep these rough stats uh, as accurate as possible. Milford was really cheating up on that play. Uh, I don't know if they saw a set that they know that Shrewsbury runs out of or what, but they really didn't respect the pass on that play at all. Fourth down, two to go. McRae back to punt. Alves the lone deep man now for Milford. McRae takes a low snap on one hop, gets it off just in time, and it's a high spiraling punt. Alves fields it on a fair catch, and that was kind of a risky play, but it'll bring it in play at the 34-yard line. Alves on a shoestring grab there. 
Well, Chris Ells is confident enough in the fact that he that he could catch the ball that he uh, he came up figured he'd prevent any kind of a good roll that would have put Milford in tough field position as it is now. They're out across the 30 and in, in pretty good shape. So it's first and 10, three minutes, 14 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Lanzetta in at fullback still. He's been the, the, the bull, the, the real uh, uh, bread and butter guy. Here I go again with the food talk. But uh, And he, they faked him on a play action. Throw over the middle of Mark Curran, complete. And a 17-yard gain for Curran. And we and Curran gets up limping, but he's going back to the huddle and not the sidelines. That was a nice fake by uh, play action sort of play by Chris Wild. He really uh, froze the Shrewsbury linebackers and, and allowed Mark Curran to get free out in the uh, defensive backfield. And Curran was the man that we felt was lost in the offensive scheme of things. Uh, we spoke spoke about it last night as Wild runs the option right to Boldy. Coming around tackle, he's got a blocker, Lanzetta, who mows down his defender. And it's another 15-yard gain for Todd Boldy. Lanzetta just really devastated uh, the uh, tackler. That, that's Cardozi, the linebacker, Cardozzi. I think. Yeah, they, they, they met head-to-head, -head and uh, Lanzetta won that battle. Uh, it's tough to tell. Whoever it was, he took a beating out there. Lanzetta just, just eating the play, knocked him uh, right on his tail pad, right? Curran now comes out of the game. He hurt himself on that catch, and John LeBlanc, a senior, comes in to fill his spot at tight end. Dropping back to pass again is Wild. Looking for Boldy in the flat. He's open. He's got the pass. And it's a four-yard gain down to the 31. So Milford using uh, just about everything, throwing everything out there now except the kitchen sink, as they say. I thought I'd throw that cliche in while we're at it. When are we going to say knock the stuffing out of him? <laughs> Mark Curran being looked at on the sidelines, uh, it looks like maybe his right ankle was injured. Uh, he made that catch, uh, picked up the first down, big play, 17-yard gain. Now Todd Boldy, a 15-yard gain, and Boldy again on a four-yard uh, swing pass out into the left flat, four-yard gain. Second down, six, Wild takes the snap, pitches right to Keaveny. Keaveny tries to cut inside but loses that four yards that uh, Boldy picked up on first down, so it'll bring up third down and ten. That was the big tackle, Chris McGinley, who penetrated real well. Uh, Mike Kamen, he didn't have a chance to, to make it to the outside, and uh, no, that was a big loss. It'll bring up third down, 10 to go, with just under two minutes to play in the third quarter, and Milford holding a slim 7-0 lead on the Shrewsbury Colonials, uh, who have an ever-dangerous wishbone offense that uh, really has, has shown signs of being a very potent offense, but uh, not getting deep into Milford's uh, territory yet today. Wild takes the snap and hands off, uh, drops back. Another play action, and he's going into the end zone to Alves again. And that ball was incomplete. And uh, the hometown fans want to see a flag on that because there was some contact, but the defender did have position, and uh, that's what the referees ruled. No, uh, no penalty on the play. Fourth down and ten. Pass was kind of underthrown, and uh, as you said, the defender was, was on the inside. He had the position. If there was any f interference call to be made, it would have been on the offense, but there, it was a, basically a clean play. They were both going for the ball. A minute 25, and the clock is stopped right now here in Milford. It's a fourth down and ten situation, and Milford will go, with, go for it now. They're at the 35-yard uh, line, so... Uh, they're going to go for it on fourth down. The pitch left to Boldy. He's got Lanzetta in front of him, but uh, someone snuck in behind him and brought him down from behind. And I believe that was number 56, Holly, the linebacker, knifing in to make the stop. There you go again, knifing. <laughs> I'm just uh, thinking about, see, my mom invited me over for Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, that's where I'm going when I get out of here. But uh, uh, I'll try to keep my mind on the game, and it's a good one. Shrewsbury takes over on downs at their 34, 33-yard line. Minute 16 to go in the uh, third quarter, and Milford leads 7-0. And uh, if they're going to get something going, uh, they better start doing it soon because time is going to become a factor Shrewsbury, for right. Dutch Holland it's Really winding down here. First and ten, Cormier pitches right to Duncan McRae, catches it on the fly and bowls ahead for six yards. Pretty unfortunate that uh, Milford couldn't get something, at least something out of that three points or so. Uh, they really were impressive on that drive, showing the diversity of the offense, and they just kind of stalled, as they have a lot of times, in, you know, around the 30, 20-yard line. So uh, Milford would have really liked to have gotten some points and be more than one score ahead right now. Mark Kern back in the game at linebacker. Steve Mobilia trots off the field right now. The wishbone offense again, working for Shrewsbury, second man 
first man through is uh, Cardozi. He bowls ahead for two more yards. It'll bring up a third down and a yard and a half situation. McCray got more than I thought on that first, first down play. He, uh, it looked like he only got about three or four yards, but he ended up with a seven-yard gain. And Cormier really uh, finishing out the play by making all of his fakes, and that's important in that type of an offense. And the ball's loose on a fumble, and it bounces ahead. Cormier lost the ball uh, at the snap. The ball bounces, and whoever has it, and it is indeed Shrewsbury, and it bounced ahead for the first down. So uh, fortunate for Shrewsbury that uh, there was the uh, offensive line had pushed Milford back far enough that they could fall on that ball. That's going to be just about do it for the third quarter here. And that should be the last play of the third quarter with five seconds in the clock running here. Milford leading seven to nothing. And uh, that's the end of the third quarter here at uh, Milford High School football field. And uh, I'm Matt Osmanski along with Jerry Guerra of the Middlesex News. We're going to call you the fourth quarter in just a minute. But uh, we got to take a break for this message first. Now nine to fifteen dollars. Crystal candlesticks sixty percent off or twenty four ninety nine. Now nine ninety nine. Bikes fifty nine percent off or one hundred fifty nine dollars. Now sixty five dollars. Microwave oven number eight eight six six two. Forty one percent off. Now one hundred eighty eight dollars. Boys Levi cords just eight dollars. Men's and women's animal characters. And uh, with Shrewsbury running that no huddle offense again, they are already at first or uh, fourth and one. Fourth and one. Uh, the uh, official on the other sideline had the first down signal up. Uh, uh, it'll be fourth down. You missed three downs. They've run them three times to Duncan McCray, and uh, it's just what they did when they opened the game. And they're they're right where they were before at the 46 yard line. And McCray gets the call on fourth down, and on second effort may have the first down. It depends on the spot. And uh, Coach Holland obviously feeling that this is a four-down uh, situation here. they got to get something going. Uh, they've, they've been able to move the ball, but uh, just from the 40-yard line to the 40-yard line, and indeed it is a first down across midfield at the Milford 45-yard line. And uh, Shrewsbury trying to get something together here. They, it's, 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 it's still early in the game, really, but when, when you're down 7 to nothing, you start to feel you're back against the wall. First down, 45-yard line. Cormier dropping back the pass over the middle. And Fessler picks it off down at the 25-yard line. And he's going to return it to the 30. 35, still on his feet, cuts back across the field. And he fumbles. And Todd Boldy alertly falls on that ball. Scott Fessler and a flag down on the field across the way at the 35-yard line. And a real... Uh, uh, a heart stopper there. I don't know. It, uh, the ball bouncing around down out there, you just don't like to see that type of thing. The flag came after the interception, so it's, it should still be Milford's ball. Uh, Fessler made a nice play, but actually number 20 for Shrewsbury, who's Bob Cody, was wide open up the middle. Uh, Cormier just overthrew him, and Fessler made a nice play to recover and an over-the-shoulder catch. He had a nice run back, but then he got hit. The ball bounced backwards about 10 yards, and Todd Boldy alertly fell on it to save, uh, keep the ball in Milford's hands. And we have a clip against Milford that will march the ball off, but it was a post-possession call. So, as you said, Jerry, Milford will maintain possession. It'll just be back at the 20-yard line, exactly the 20-yard line, and it'll be first down and 10. Nine minutes, 17 seconds to go. Milford has the ball and the lead, and uh, they'll be looking just to kill the clock here. I think that Milford would like to have a sustained drive. They might put it up a, a couple of times, but I think they're going to stay basically conservative, don't want to make any mistakes deep in their own end, uh, get as much of the clock off as they can, and then maybe get in that, that second score that would just about do it. Alves is wide left. The pitch to Boldy going left. Cuts back inside uh, with the Lanzetta kick block and picks up three yards before he's brought down. Jason Holly in on the stop. 
to staying with that, that uh, tailback up the middle play, which is it's real rare for Milford. You don't see that all that often. Uh, it's worked to the extent that they're getting two, three, four yards with it, but it's not really been uh, the, the game-breaking game runs that Todd Boldy's used to. Clock running now and working against Shrewsbury. Wild calling the signals. Elmore in motion left to right. And the handoff up the middle to Lanzetta. Just bowls up. Three more yards. It'll be third down and four now for Milford. This is about as conservative as you can get. Two, two dives up the middle. Uh, first sort of an off-tackle play, but it was, uh, like I said, real basic. Stick to the ground. Maybe see if we can get about three or four first downs together uh, and eat up a, a, as much of the clock as possible. And give it to your sure-handed guys, too. Lanzetta in there at fullback. Boldy the tailback. Robertson left. Alves right. Now they're in the split back. Hand off to Boldy, hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped. Two yard loss, it'll bring up fourth down. So Shrewsbury with a big defensive stand here. Shrewsbury's played real tough defensively, although, as I said, Milford has opened up some holes in the line. Uh, I think you used the term bend but not break, and, and outside of that long touchdown pass, Shrewsbury's really toughened up, toughened up when they had to. Boldy will be back to punt. And deep to receive will be uh, Duncan McRae, the 60-minute the guy. And he's standing at the 40-yard line. Boldy gets it off just barely again, almost blocked. Fielded at the 50 and fumble. And Milford may have the ball. Waiting for the referee signal, and no! They say McRae got the ball back, and that was close, folks. To David Atwood, number 40 for Milford. He's a sophomore. He's uh, played real well on special teams. He dove in there, and it looked for a minute like he might have come up with the ball, but uh, McRae obviously fought it, fought his way to uh, regain possession, and Shrewsbury has real good field position now. So uh, Shrewsbury really, in the last minute or so, just in this, in this uh, quarter here, has had trouble almost trying to kill itself in, in essence, uh, but they come out now set in that wishbone type offense. Cormier, and there's movement on both sides, and I think this one's gotta go against uh, uh, Shrewsbury. Jason Hawley lined up in the backfield, uh, very similar to, to the kind of play we've talked about, the full house backfield that Milford runs. Uh, obviously not used to being back there, and he jumped forward. Uh, still could have saved it if he'd gone into motion or something, but uh, just didn't. Didn't really think of it, and turned out to be, uh, looks like it's going to be five yards against Shrewsbury. While they figure this penalty out, we're going to take a break for this message. Liquid chromatography may be a mouthful, but you might be surprised. Elmore because he got up hobbling. Go. It's a clip. How am I doing on those guessings so far? I think I'm two for two, aren't I? I think you're batting about 666, Jerry. You missed one early. Oh, did I? <laughs> no, it was early then. Yeah. Had to warm up a little bit. You had to open your eyes. <laughs> and he's got them open now, folks, and uh, that's a 15-yarder. Uh, any personal foul is a 15-yard penalty in high school football, so uh, it'll be back to the 28-yard line where it'll be first down once again and uh the clock says 30 it's about right and it is right 30 yards for the first down for shrewsbury actually uh it looks like about 31 in high school football they take it from where the foul occurred and it was about a yard behind the line of scrimmage so they marked it from there split backfield now with two wide receivers right the pitch going left to cardozi and he picks up two yards and is brought down by curran for Milford, and also in there was D. Girolamo, who's been all over the field today. He's played a great game. Every, every game, he's, he's been incredible this year. He really has. He's, uh, he's a sure thing for all league. He's, he's got to be considered one of the most valuable defensive players in the middle league. Surprisingly mobile for a big kid. Too. Yeah, that's it. He's always in the backfield, always in the other side pursuing. He's just uh, had an incredible year. 
and the split backfield now. Dropping back to pass is Cormier, and he's looking to set up the screen again. He's got Cardozi. Cardozi's got a couple yards, but he is hemmed in at the sidelines. Fester, Fessler in there, Curran catching him from behind, and also Elmore in there. And Curran once again getting up a little slowly, but uh, not really hobbling on that ankle like he had when he caught the pass. He's been back in... Uh, uh, for the last two series on defense. Well, for coaching that really irate, uh, real wide open uh, on that play. So we have a timeout once again on the field with six minutes, three seconds to go, and Milford holding a 7 to nothing lead. We'll be back right after this message. From Wild to Alves, nobody really, the, the closest that uh, Milford's gotten is inside the 20-yard line. Uh, Shrewsbury never really getting in there. They've been playing from about the 40 to the 40 today. This has been a 30 to 30 game, both both teams in the middle of the field. Cormier takes a snap, dropping straight back. Boldy in there and hits, and there's a fumble. And Cormier was leveled. They're calling that an incomplete pass. And boy, did, uh, did, did Boldy get the lick in on Cormier today. Boldy came from that left end position that he plays. It looked as if he was going backwards, but the uh, referee was right on top of it. I don't know if you can hear it, but the Milford fans don't like it all that much. Very unpopular uh, call here in Milford. That's a big big call because if, if the ball's fumbled back to the 30, even if Shrewsbury does recover it, the field position difference is about 20 yards. Now this punt, Milford could be pinned back deep in its own end instead of having real good field position. With fourth and 11, Keevan, he races back, but now the coaches are telling him to get up and try to block this thing. They were expecting perhaps a fake, but Duncan McRae does indeed boot it away, and it takes a dead hop, bounced straight up in the air and died at the 23-yard line. That's where Milford will bring the offense back onto the field. And boy, was that a hectic couple of minutes there. Amazing. Uh, that hit by Boldy, uh, I just have to go back to that. That's, that's one of the best hits we've seen anybody make this year. Really eyed him up. He saw that when he was licking his chops the whole way on a full sp dead sprint nailed Cormier right in the middle of the chest and knocked him over backwards. Cormier, a tough kid, bounced right back up. Yeah, I was surprised. He really took a lick and he got uh, sat back up and got back into, uh, into the game. But uh, that hit by Boley and the hit by Mike Keeveny earlier, a uh, line side, almost a near sack, were about the two hardest hits all game. And a lot of movement there, but no flags. And the handoff to Lanzetta stopped at the line of scrimmage. Just a straight dive up the middle, which is uh, what they, they do with Lanzetta. You don't see him running too many sweeps. Well, I think Shrewsbury right now is expecting Milford to stay conservative, and that's what they're doing. Um, I think it, the sweeps are a fairly safe play for Milford. I wouldn't be surprised if they went to that, try to pick up some yards. Obviously, the, ins the inside stuff just isn't working. The clock now definitely a factor. Five and a half minutes, less than five and a half minutes to go, and there is a stoppage of the clock right now. Referee running in just as the play was trying to get underway. Clock says 516. Now they restart the clock. And the play. And the pitch left to Boldy. And Boldy's got some running rooms and a block, but a flag is down. Boldy got some big yardage. Lowers his shoulder, is brought down by Duncan McRae and Jason Holly. It's also in there, back, but it is going to come back. And it's a clip, and he points directly at Curran, Mark Curran. Curran doesn't know what the referee's talking about, of course. Uh, there's a uh, there's a buffer zone between three yards on both sides of the line of scrimmage that uh, where if you clip somebody, it isn't a clip because it's considered uh, I don't know incidental contact or something like that. But uh, I guess the referee decided that it was behind that three yard Not zone within the zone, right? Well, I, it's, it's a tough call, real tough call for Milford at this point. I know that. Uh, Milford's not real happy about that because that was a big gain. It was a potentially a real big play. And they're way down on their own three-yard line, is that? No, I think I think the, the official's on the wrong yard marker. Looks like about the seven. Oh, the seven-yard line. Okay. And that, again, they marked that from the from where it occurred, which still would have been second down and 30 to go jerry a tough situation this is really deep in their own territory they don't want to give anything up here they give it to the sure-handed lanzetta but uh, he doesn't get much of that 30 yards back i tell you i really don't understand that i don't know if i'm missing something here but it looked like the clip of the cl closest place it could have been is about the 20 19 20 yard line mark that half halfway to the goal line and you're still at the nine uh milford didn't look like he got a real good mark out of that well there is, as I said earlier, no instant replay here. Uh, we're not in the NFL, and so we cannot argue with the, with the officials. 
uh, on that call. Who nine. says? <laughs> we have a trips receiver's right. Elmore, Robertson, and Boldy. And Wild drops back to pass. Gets good protection. Fires it out to Boldy. Boldy has it. And a lot of that 30 yards back. He's out to the 32-yard line. And that'll be 28 of those 30 yards he got back. Uh, it's going to bring up a fourth down and two situation, though. Nope. Not, go ahead, Jerry. I'm going to say that uh, Wild loves to go to Boldy. Boldy's the ex-tight end. Uh, made a lot of catches last year, and this year he's their leading receiver. He's got about 15 or 16 catches, and uh, real short-handed plays. He made some big catches, and that was one right there. Got Milford out of deep position. That was big because now they have some room to punt the ball away as Boldy sets the punt. Just under four minutes to go now. The snap is good. Boldy gets it up, and it's an end-over-end -end thing that bounces at the 50-yard line and is going to roll dead at the 40. And that's where Shrewsbury will get another chance at it. Uh, it's getting kind of late. They're going to have to do something now, Jerry. This is do or die for Shrewsbury at this point. Exactly. Uh, 3.44 left on the clock. Shrewsbury's got to get this thing in quick if they're, if they're hoping to uh, go to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1972. Uh, they're going to have to over up their offense a little bit. This has really been... Uh, kind of a conservative game, surprisingly. Milford's thrown a few times, but it's been a real fast game, real, uh, as I say, conservative. Both teams stuck to the ground. Shrewsbury's thrown a few passes, but haven't been all that effective. None, none deep. The split backfield now. Two receivers right for Shrewsbury. The pitch right to Cardozi. Cuts inside and is nailed by Lanzetta. And the, the two co-captains for each team, uh, similar in stature, similar in that they play the same positions, offensive and defensive, and they meet on the field. And uh, it's a gain of only about a half a yard. Bring up second down and nine and a half for Shrewsbury. That play has been shut down every time by, I'll tell you what happened, Chris Elmore comes up and contains the outside, makes Cardozi come inside. Uh, Lanzetta slides over from the linebacking position to make that short tackle, and he seems like he never misses. Time a real factor here in this game. Seven to nothing, Milford leads. Cormier takes the snap, and he fakes to the middle and then hands off left to Duncan McRae, who is all down in the backfield. And that's uh, Derek Atherton on a great play, just coming in from his uh, defensive backfield position. That's awful. And there's a late flag in there, and Robbie Lanzett is uh, uh, upset, so I am going to have to assume that it's going to be against Milford. What happened there was Derek Atherton came in and made a nice play. He was spinning the man around. He brought him down to the ground, and uh, as he was going down, Mike Keevy came in and made a hit. Looked like it was plenty. And that's another of those unpopular calls here in Milford. Uh, it's a 15-yarder and will include a first down. Although they're still marking it second down. I really didn't like that call at all. It was 15 yards. It was really, I think it was a bad call. That should be a first down, and they're straightening that out now. First down. Those personal fouls always include a, 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 an automatic first down on them. Looked like he might have called a spear uh, on that. Spear. Tough, tough call to Milford to take. It really was a big play. I didn't catch the end of the play, so I, I cannot uh, even... Uh, take a stab at what happened but a uh, big play. it was a personal foul and regardless it puts Shrewsbury in a much better position on uh, first down it's Duncan McRae and he gets four yards and just about everybody on the defense except for Scott Fessler and uh, Phil Lambert were in on that tackle there a lot of red in there uh, Lambert and, and Fessler protecting the deep guys and those were the only two guys that didn't get in on Duncan McRae he was uh, overmatched on that one Two minutes, 20 seconds, and counting here in this homecoming game on Thanksgiving. Beautiful day for a game, and we've seen a real good one. 7 to nothing. Milford leads. Time running out on Shrewsbury as they take a last-ditch effort at it. And here's Cardozi, and he busts it up the middle, picks up 14 yards. And a first down, and he's down to the 34-yard line for of the Milford 34-yard line. And uh, Shrewsbury really making a fight of it. Well, they're sticking to the ground, and they're eating up the clock. They're going to have, they're, they're, it's kind of an all-or-nothing thing. They feel, figure this is what they do best. They run the ball. They're going to run it, hopefully get down in there and score before uh, the clock expires, and then they go for the two. I'm, I'm positive. We're under two minutes to play now. Cormier takes the snap, hands off up the middle. Cardozi again. Forges ahead for three or four yards. Clock continues to run now. There's a timeout on the field, and Shrewsbury has called a timeout. And while they take a break on the field, we're going to take a break up here in the booth. We'll be right back.
or Route 16 and 109 Milford. Less than a minute and a half to go now. Third down and five for Shrewsbury. Time running out on them. Milford leads seven to nothing, but Shrewsbury really mounting a charge here. The handoff up the middle to Cardozi, and he gets close to the first down. Falls forward, looks like he has it. It's gonna be real close, Matt. And they're gonna have to measure that. It looks to me like he does have it. He had to get across the 25-yard line down to about the 25 and a half, and that's about where the spot is. I think he's got that one. I'm gonna go for uh, go for broke and say he has it. You're a betting man? Sure. Why not? And they bring the change across the field. A minute and eight to go, and Shrewsbury with their deepest penetration of the game. Uh, uh, they waited till the end of the game to do this, and they're really making a a, a, a real charge here. <laughs> Well, there Jerry. I go. <laughs> well what what did you have down on that? It's fourth down, Jerry. Fourth fortunately, down and about fortunately only my good name. Three <laughs> not much then. Exactly. <laughs> fourth down and about uh, three or four inches to go. And uh, this is the play of the game right now. Uh, no question about it. Milford has to stop Shrewsbury here. Shrewsbury has to has to get the first down. If they fail to get the first down here, their season's over. Shrewsbury's been able to get this one yard, and they've needed it several times. Well, I wouldn't say several, but three or at least three or four times. And uh, last time, I think they snuck the ball, Cormier. Yeah. Well, they snuck it once. They gave the they have Cardozi right behind him, so uh, it'll be one or the other. Cormier sneaks again, and he does have the first down, and this game continues as the clock is stopped now. They've, they've certainly kept our interest here, haven't they? It's been a, a real interesting fourth quarter. Milford scoring on the long play has not really gotten close to the goal line since. Shrewsbury hasn't been close all day, and now they're mounting their most serious charge of the game. They're at the Milford 23-yard line, first and 10, 45 seconds to go in the game. The pitch left, Toporowski cuts inside. There's a flag down, and Toporowski picks up five. A flag in the backfield. Well, there was some movement, and it, took, it looked like it must have got stuck in one of the referee's pocket or something because he couldn't get it out, or he didn't throw it early, but uh, finally the flag came. It looks like it should be marched off against Shrewsbury. And it is indeed a legal procedure against the offense. Like a little derisive cheer from the Milford fans who seems like, uh, seems to think that they haven't really gotten a fair shake from the referees. Yeah, they, they think that the referees all need glasses, I hear. Uh, but at any rate, uh, that will bring up a first down and 15 situation, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Only 40 seconds left in this game, and should Shrewsbury lose in their season? Tell you, the clock is running up on the board. Uh, they haven't, the signal just went, so it shouldn't have been running, but 30 seconds now and counting. I think there's more than that, though. Cormier takes the snap, drops straight back, looking into the end zone. The ball's tipped up and incomplete. Clock will stop with 19 showing on the game clock. But we don't know if that's the official clock because, as Jerry said, there was some question as to whether that clock started prematurely or not. Mike Keevy made a nice play. That ball was up. He could have tried to intercept it. He could have, could have uh, just batted it up in the air. But instead, he made the nice play by batting it out of bounds. No, no chance for anybody to catch it. This is a situation where they may have to depend on the throw again. Cormier, single setback is Cardozi. Cormier will throw. He's going towards the end zone. Duncan McRae there. Scott Fessler has the interception. At the seven-yard line, Scott Fessler coming up with his second interception of the game, and that will just about wrap it up here, Jerry. He had that one all the way. It was playing a zone defense, a deep zone on the left side. Cormier threw it up for grabs. Uh, Fessel played the ball all the way, made the sure-handed catch around his head, and uh, just brought it in, made sure he didn't lose it again. Big play by Scott Fessler, who's been making them all year back there. 12 seconds left on the game clock. Milford will take over at their seven-yard line. They lead seven to nothing. All they need to do is fall on it here. I think, uh, I think we're gonna see Milford play next week. Uh, chances are real good for them to get in the Super Bowl. We have to check out some other scores and, and make sure the people that we needed to win, win. And uh, But it does look good, as uh, Nick Achilles said earlier, as Jerry Guerra confirms here, and Chris Wilde sits down on the ball, and Shrewsbury calls a timeout, nine seconds left. But uh, really, just a formality here, Jerry. They can afford to run the clock out here. Well, if they keep calling timeouts, Milford, uh, 
Milford might have to do something with that. Shrewsbury saved a few timeouts. It's a question of how many they have left. So with this timeout on the field, we're going to take another break here, but we'll be, right, we'll be right back to bring you the end of this game right after this message. Spend a little more time with your family and friends when you cook faster with a General Electric microwave from Frank's Appliance. And since it never hurt to save a lot of money when you buy something wonderful, you'll be delighted that Frank's has the GE Gem 5 microwave on sale for just $1.99. A great GE microwave that cooks and defrosts by weight has five power levels, time cook one and two, and a lot more. And speaking of more, this is just one of the GE microwaves on sale now at Frank's Appliance, 331 Main Street, Milford. I discovered the problem, George, when I brought my son up here to Camp Wanakugel. So what's the problem? So I told Seymour. That's your son? That's the camp director. Oh, so what's the problem? I told him whenever I have a problem, I call my independent camper agent, George Pearson. So what's the problem? I said whenever I need protection for my home, car, family, or business, my independent camper agent always maps out the best insurance value for me. Right, George? Right. So what's the problem, Joe? Well, what happened is little Stinky Harrison got homesick, so they sent him home. Uh... Stinky was the camp bugler, you know... Main Street, downtown Milford. Some places have chicken, but try as they might, they don't know what it takes to make the chicken done right. All it takes is the taste of Kentucky Fried Chicken. All it takes is a bite of the one that's done right. All it takes is the taste of Kentucky Fried Chicken, cause we do chicken right. 
after the game or any time, Kentucky Fried Chicken in Milford is the place to find the best chicken money can buy, including original extra crispy and during lunch barbecue. Kentucky Fried Chicken, 112 Main Street, Milford, wishes the Scarlet Hawks the best of luck. We do chicken right. Okay, folks, the game's over. Uh, there was some confusion at the end. The referee still wanted to straighten a few things out. But uh, once again, if, uh, if you just tuned in for this part, it was an exciting game, and Milford pulled it out 7-2, to two, a baseball-type score. But uh, they win it none the same. Uh, uh, none, none, none the same. The same. None, I think that's uh, nonetheless. Uh, you were an English major. You can make words up. <laughs> at, at, or cliches at, or anything I want to do. Uh, at any rate, they're down there uh, saluting each other. Uh, it was a hard-fought game. Uh, got a lot of respect for both teams. Uh, they, they played a, a hard game. Really, the big break was that long touchdown from Wild to Alves, the only touchdown in the game. And then uh, Wilde was involved in the final score, too, when he took the safety to kill the clock out. Uh, but what can you say about this game, Jerry? It's just an all-around great Thanksgiving Day game. It was a real suspenseful game. It wasn't as uh, maybe as exciting uh, football-wise if it was you know played in the middle of the season. But the fact that there was so much riding on it, it was such a close game, uh, wasn't perhaps as hard-hitting as we thought it was going to be. But all that matters to Milford right now is that the Midland League champs, and uh, right there, they're also... I would say the chances are 9 out of 10. They're going to the Super Bowl. The way things uh, the way things figure out, a lot of things would have to go right for Doherty. Milford has a lot more chances of, of getting points than Doherty does out and of uh, opponent points. -wise. I believe what we are seeing down here now is the presentation of the Midland League trophy. I, they, Thanksgiving Day game, they give out a lot of awards. Uh, best players, best offensive player, defensive player, things like that. So... Uh, once again, the, the, the business at hand has been taken care of. Milford won the game, 7 to nothing. A, a, a cliffhanger of a game really came right down to the final play. Uh, good sportsmanship on both sides. Both teams really wanted to win, obviously. Uh, but uh, Shrewsbury took it like, uh, uh, you know, just, just took their bitter pill to, to swallow. They're going to go home, and uh, they've got nothing to be ashamed of. They fought a good game. Uh, finish the season 7-3, Milford 7-2-1, and one. take the Midland League, got to cross their fingers tonight, uh, start reading some scores in the papers tomorrow, find out who won, who lost, add up the opponent points, and we'll know tomorrow whether Milford will be in the Super Bowl or not. I don't think they're going to wait till tomorrow. I think they're going to be making some phone calls to some newspapers and find out who won what and do some uh, little calculating. Uh, right now they're awarding some uh, trophies. The offensive player of the game.
He shall also be an acknowledged leader, admired and respected by his peers, both on and off the field. Presenting the award on behalf of the family today are Becky Gonzalez and Lisa DiMattia. The 1986 David Tiger D'Amico Lyman of the Year Award is presented to a senior number 61, Steve Mobilia. All right, Steve.